You're a straight talker. You were sacked, right? Well, I left government and, you know, I apologise for what happened and, you know, it, my actions caused difficulty for the government as the 24,000 people who were tracking me at the time also, you know, saw that. Let's get, let's get, out, let's get mm. out of the way because it's not why you're on, really, but it's, it's, you haven't talked about this uh, since. Mm. You were having unauthorised meetings with senior Israeli figures, including Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It looked sneaky. It looked like a cabinet minister was going around the back of her boss and exercising a bit of power play, building up relations with allies and so on. Why were you doing it? Well, I disagree with that. And I take the view that, you know, as a politician, we all know other politicians around the world. You know, whether you are abroad, on business or even on holiday, I think it's remiss if you don't actually go meet people that you know. And that's what I did. There was no malice well, shouldn't intended Shouldn't you tell your boss, though, when you're meeting well, world Well, you know, in hindsight, of course, Piers, absolutely, in hindsight. And that's why I left the government, because obviously it caused clear difficulties. Hang and on I a moment. And it's I not about, I wouldn't have that. thought it was about hindsight. If you're going to meet the Prime Minister of Israel, Israel, foresight should tell you that you would well, tell your own well, look, leader, I mean, the I, Prime I have, Minister of the UK. I think it's fair to say I have accepted that. I apologise. There was no malice intended whatsoever at the time. And I, you know, left the government. So, why, that so is... why did you meet him? Well, he's somebody that I know. I've met him before. And I, well, had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to meet him. And to be fair, as I've said, you know, at home, you know, when I've been abroad before, and politicians do know other politicians around the world. And I would have thought, you know, for your viewers in particular, it's a good thing that politicians actually in this country get on with other I politicians. I don't disagree with that. Uh, what I, but if, if I was your boss mm. and I discovered that you'd been sneaking off meeting other world leaders, very important world leaders like Benjamin Netanyahu, and had thought to mention it to me, I'd be incandescent. Well, look, I, we agree, OK? And that has happened, and that is the past now, and I'm moving on from that, and I've been clear that I've apologised for that. But, you know, there was no malice intended, and I was very clear, clear with the Prime Minister about that too. OK, she was furious, and you left stage right uh, from the Cabinet. But you were a very well-known Brexiteer in the Cabinet. As you've seen things progress, what is your view of where we are now in terms of Brexit? As we approach, you know, yeah. we know what's coming, the cliff top's coming. Well, I think it's pretty clear, you know, we are now moving into an important phase, a really important phase. And we saw in December, you know, the Prime Minister got to the stage and I'm really pleased, actually, everyone worked to get to the phase where we can now move on to talk about trade. Mm. You know, getting a trade deal is really important. It's important for our economy, the future of our country, for economic security, people's jobs and well-being in Britain. So this is a really important year. You know, we're leaving next year, March 2019, the 29th of March. And so right now we have the opportunity to be outward facing. I believe Brexit is a fantastic opportunity for our country and I've been here before and said okay. that. Would you like to be back now where you can really make a difference? Well, look, I think at the end of the day I left government and I've got a very big voice out there when it comes to Brexit. Would you like to have a very issues. big voice at the table well, again? Well, to be fair, that's a matter for the Prime Minister. But are you available? And, well, if she's that's, watching a, the that's program, a matter for her. I know she she's does. a busy lady, come on. But if she's watching a... the programme, I mean, you know, you wouldn't rule it out. That's a matter for her, it really But you wouldn't is. say no. I, look, I, this is not a yes or no situation. Well, it's, it's She's a bit like a getting a knighthood, where they, they basically they <laughs> ring you and they kind of find out, would you accept My it? contribution, Piers, is no doubt through the backbenches, speaking out for Brexit, but also many of the other issues of the day as well. You know, I represent a great constituency in Essex. Have you spoken, My constituents have you spoken have a to lot the Prime of Minister issues going since on. you were... Of course I have. I see her around regular? Parliament. Not regularly, I see her around Parliament. She's friendly to you? Of course. Well, she's still slamming We're, the dagger are, in the back. We are a united party and we talk to all colleagues so you know it's not like You're cordial with the prime minister of course i am absolutely along with loads of other colleagues and if it should the eventuality let's let's play the fall under a bus thing right not that the prime minister ever gets a bus but if she did and she fell under one and there was a leadership contest can you categorically 100 percent say you would not Put your hat in the ring. Well, I, I haven't got a crystal ball. Just like those economists in the Brexit debate, you know, mm. no one knows what the future holds. And quite frankly, you know, everything changes quite frequently. So that's politics. a yes, really, isn't it? You, Not you, at all. You I just don't there. know. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, quite but frankly. But you are ambitious, aren't you? Everyone says that about you. You're very ambitious. Well, I, mean people, that, I don't mean that as a negative. People say a lot about you as well. I'm, people I'm make chilling. I, but for here's, here's Beyond here's the no illusion, well. I am here's chilling. Here's to be I'm, Prime Minister. I'm chillingly ambitious. There's no doubt about that. He told me he wanted to run Arsenal earlier. Privy, I am chillingly ambitious, right? I see no problem in being 
you're not going to stand. Are you ambitious? Well, look, I'm ambitious for our country. Let's mm. be clear about that. I want us to succeed. I want us to be, you know, that bright beacon of hope, a fantastic economy. And, of course, you know, Brit I want to secure Britain's place in the world through Brexit, but making my contribution through the backbenches, but being quite a robust MP as well. OK, final question. You're an Arsenal fan like me. We're about <laughs> to sell our best player to Manchester United. Yeah, we're United. going to start weeping over this Alexis now. Sanchez. Uh, how many more times is Arsene Wenger going to sell our best player to our Premier League rivals before he himself has to do a pretty and exit stage left? Well, I have to say, I've always been a loyalist to leaders, including the leader of my football team, but sadly, I do think, you know, time, the time has... Wenger out. Time's off. I'm, I'm on that, I'm so in that camp So, May now. in, Wenger out. Absolutely.